You're not going to believe this, but literally last week, me and my friend got charged at by a cow. We're on no! <laughs> I fucking... I was... I'm so sorry. This is so mean. I was going to pause it and go, You have a friend? I don't fucking believe it. But then... <laughs> Me and my friend got charged at by a cow. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. I have COVID. <laughs> if you weren't already aware, I have the vid. I managed to avoid it for this whole time, like two and a half years of being a hermit. And then we went to a wedding and now I have COVID. It is what it is. I actually, it's been like two weeks now since I got it and I'm feeling much, much better, but I'm still gross and coldy, I know I look and feel like a slug. I did not realise how creased my shirt was either until too late, and I'm not, I can't change now. So I apologise for just being a gross slug person. This is my job now, so the show must go on. When you're ill for so long you get kind of bored and want to go back to work anyway, and I am feeling loads better. Now I'm just like super coldy and I get tired super fast, I'm sleeping like 13 hours a night, and then I'll like stream or something, and then I still have to have a nap. It's crazy, man. It wipes you out. Avoid it if you can. Oh, and that happened. That came while I was very, very sick with COVID, and it cheered me up a lot. I got her a pretentious little gold stand. <laughs> I did it, mom. When I am feeling slightly less disgusting, I'm hoping in like a week or so, uh, I have an update video planned, so we can talk about that and the yay, the shiny, um, a stream, sorry, an update stream, um, and we can talk about some live stuff. So anyway, yeah, I have COVID, feel like a slug, look like a slug, but I got a shiny YouTube award now, so swings and roundabouts. So today, we're going to take a look at, I don't know how to describe this, I've only watched the first, like, minute of this so far. So, I'm thrilled to go on this journey with you. This is a video on Facebook, which is, for some reason, if it's on Facebook, it's ten times weirder than <laughs> any other platform, especially when it's, like, conspiracy stuff. This is a video from Off the Curb Ministries, which is the most appropriate name for this particular ministry. They've added this video to their playlist, Apocalypse. So, um... It's a Christian doomsday cult. That's what it is. Although Christianity is kind of a doomsday cult. The, the most upsetting thing about this is that it has two million views. <laughs> so let's just let's just dive in and see what Off the Curb Ministries has to warn us about the horrors that await us. This video is called "Once You See It, You Can Never Unsee It." You can call me crazy, but do you not think that this? looks like this. And do you not think that this thing... Hang on. Do you not think that this... You can call me crazy, this. but do you not think that this... Yeah. ...looks like this? And do you not think that this thing right... Do we think that a bull looks like a bull? Yeah? I mean, you might be onto something. We're nine seconds in. That was too many edits. <laughs> Even for me. Right here bears an awful resemblance to this thing right here. For those of I you can't who are even, not I don't even know what you're talking about because it went so fast I couldn't look at it. What is it? To this a resemblance to right. this. What's that? I don't know what this is. It's a woman on a bull. Right here. Is that a religious thing? That's a dragon. So it does. It definitely doesn't look like that. For those of you who are not familiar with what has just happened, every no four idea. years, 56 countries come together and they put on a smaller version of the Olympics. It's called the Common... I was going to say, I sort of slightly resent the Commonwealth Games being called a smaller Olympics. I suppose it is. I suppose that's probably... A, I suppose that's probably quite a good explanation if you're not familiar with the Commonwealth Games, but I, that feels a bit like it cheapens it to me. I don't know, I'm a little bit offended on behalf of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth <laughs> Games. And this year at the opening ceremony, which was hosted in my country in England, do you know what they did? Oh no, this is a crazy English ministry. Oh fuck. 
That brings the embarrassment levels up tenfold. They brought out a 32-foot bronze bull and then a big crowd of people got down on their knees and began to worship this bull. Now I know it- I don't think they worshipped it. I think they were doing dances and they- It's cool! I'm gonna look it up because it looks really awesome. Let's see... Commonwealth Games opening bull. Okay, are you ready to learn what the opening ceremony to the Commonwealth Games actually represents. The bull was pulled on stage by 50 women, representing the female chain makers of the Industrial Revolution, who made chains in the slave trade. The segment featured the women breaking free from their chains to symbolise release from oppression. The ceremony's protagonist, Stella, then offers friendship to the bull. I need to blow my nose. I'm so sorry. I hate my life right now. Highlighting our ability for compassion and togetherness. So you see this a lot, actually. I think the the last time the Olympic Games was in London, you had a lot of representation in the opening ceremony as well of the Industrial Revolution. That is a massive part of our history that is quite often uh, represented in interesting ways like this. And a big mechanical bull and uh, all the, the 50 women with the chains, I think that's a really cool way of representing that. I can't wait to see this ministry explain how it's actually the devil or some shit. Exactly what you're thinking. You're saying, Joe, it's just a piece of art. Calm down, sit down, and be quiet. Well, can I say this? Definitely calm down. You need to ease up on the stock footage, mate. I understand that you probably paid a lot of money for your stock footage subscription. It doesn't mean you have to use it every three seconds. All right? It's too much too fast. If Moses, when he noticed that the people of Israel, after being gone for just five minutes, they turned and worshipped a golden calf. If Moses slammed down the Ten Commandments and his face was filled with rage, is it wrong for me to just simply ask the question, what on earth is going on right now? Okay. I've just explained what's going on. It's about the fact that a massive part of our history is the slave trade, oppressing women, and then it highlights that we have the ability for kindness and compassion, and that should be what we do moving forward. I think it's quite a Christian message. <laughs> Based on what people in the UK, particularly in the UK government, claim are our wonderful Christian values, I think that's a very appropriate message. But no, it's a bull. And because a bull is the same species as a calf, therefore, does this guy get angry when he sees a real, like, cow? Like, when he's out in the world and he sees, like, a calf? Is he like, oh, fuck, Moses would be furious right now? I do admit that this could all be one big coincidence. But it's not even a big coincidence. It's a tiny coincidence. It's basically, there's a cow in both of these stories. That's not a fucking coincidence, that's just an animal. Fucking hell. Personally, I do find it rather suspect that right now, in the world we live in, we have never seen more spiritual darkness. We have never had more people- Everyone, in every age, has said that exact thing. Now is the time. We're in the spiritual darkness. And I completely disagree. What I assume he means is that fewer people than ever are religious. I, I even I even take exception to the idea that fewer people being religious means fewer people are spiritual. I think people are more introspective than ever. I think we're really looking for compassion and kindness and meaning. And I think people are doing that in interesting and beautiful ways. Just because not as many people are doing it in a Christian church doesn't mean it's not... It doesn't mean we're in an era of spiritual darkness. I'm just very interested in how... Every religious person, especially Christians, Christian groups and Christian cults are especially guilty of this. Every single group convince them, convinces themselves that they are in the end times. We are the last ones at the end here. What makes you different from every other Christian doomsday cult that has come before and has been terribly, terribly wrong? The fact is, life is gonna go on. You might perceive this spiritual darkness, but you're gonna live your life, you're gonna get old, you're gonna die, and the world is just gonna keep on turning. People in the world who are anti-God, who hate the God of the Bible, and do everything- Anti-God. I kinda want that on a t-shirt. I actually, should I make that? Because I love that. Anti-God. 
and the way he's phrased it is brilliant because anti-god that hate the god of the bible that's me i do hate the god of the bible the god of the bible is an evil character but i don't mind because i don't believe in him i don't think he's real i like that he phrased that as hate the god of the bible instead of just saying hate god because that's actually accurate and anti-god it kind of, it almost there's something like anti-hero about it it's almost like the sort of antagonist god I don't know. I like anti God. I want that on like a mug or a t shirt or something. I'm gonna I'm gonna be thinking about that. Thank you, Off the Curb Ministries, for that fabulous idea. Everything that is opposite to what the God of the Bible commands. And then we tune in on TV and we see millions of people choose So much fucking stock footage. Just you don't need to use it all in every video. Tuning in to see a big bunch of actors worshipping a bronze bull in a ceremony. Why is that so- They weren't- they weren't worshipping a bronze bull in a ceremony. It's like he's seen the imagery and he's put it on mute and has decided his own meaning and has like- so what's the conspiracy- like he's like, oh is it just a coincidence? What's the alternative that he's proposing? That the people running the Commonwealth Games, or the people in charge of the artistic direction of the opening of the Commonwealth Games, are spreading, what, a satanic message? An anti-god message? Because of their performance about our part in the slave trade? And oppressing women? And I just think it's funny that that, like, it, that it's about... <laughs> it's about fucking slavery. It's about oppressing women and people of colour. And this, like, fucking middle-class, white, British, Christian man is like, is it really, though? I think this might be a big conspiracy. Because of course he doesn't fucking get it. You're really showing us up, man. You're making us look like right dickheads. <laughs> So strange to me because there is one God when there was times of darkness in the Bible there is one God that the people of Israel repeatedly went back to worshipping over and over again and it grieved God's spirit what was this God's name? Baal and what animal was <sighs> I'm starting to get sold on Baal like if people kept going back to it over and over again in times of darkness I thought that was a good idea. It's also a good reminder. This guy's brilliant. He could be he could be an atheist YouTuber. He's really got a lot of the a lot of the techniques down pat. Because like he's making a brilliant case for reminding us that back in the origins back in the origins of the Bible, of the Old Testament, uh God was part of a pantheon. Yahweh was just one of Yahweh was one of a pantheon of gods. And there were other gods being worshipped. It was Baal. You've guessed it. He was a bull. But actually, this goes a lot deeper than just a bunch of people worshipping a bull idol. When Jesus Christ was talking about Satan, do you know what- I, f I will feel guilty. I preface this with a an apology in case this is how this guy genuinely talks all the time. I find that hard to believe. I think I can tell. From being a YouTuber and doing some acting and filmmaking and stuff, I think I can tell when someone puts on a shitty internet voice. We saw it with the Christian guy who claimed he met Jesus and Satan and he was like pretending to cry through the video. I think this guy's putting on a nice, soft, special voice that makes you feel comfortable and spiritual. The kind of voice you expect a spiritual man to have. The voice of reason that just comforts you and makes you feel like, yes, this is reality. While he's talking absolute shit. I just really, really strongly suspect this guy is putting on this voice and I find it deeply irritating. I say through my incredibly nasally fucking Covid voice. What name he gave to Satan? He called him Beelzebub. In other words, you are Baal. You are the prince of demons. And that is so scary. In one understanding, Beelzebub is translated literally as Lord of the Flies. It was long ago suggested there was a relationship between the Philistine god and cults of flies. Alternatively, the deity's actual name could have been Beelzebul, Lord of the Heavenly Dwelling. And Beelzebub could have been a derogatory pun used by the Israelites. On the plus side, I've learned something. Because when Moses found the people of Israel worshipping this gold calf, what did that represent? It meant that those people were worshipping Satan. When King A- Nah. Unless you're going to claim that 
all other deities actually a lot of christians would claim this unless you're going to claim that all other deities worshipped by other religions are actually satan which gives satan a lot more power than he seems to have in the bible um no it's just a different is a different deity it's just a different deity that doesn't exist as much as your deity doesn't exist Ahab and Queen Jezebel, when they introduced the worship of Baal worship to the people of Israel, what were they introducing the worship of? They were Not encouraging Satan. people to bow down to Satan. No, they when weren't. Elijah confronted those 450 prophets of Baal, who was he challenging? He wasn't just confronting 450 men, no, he was confronting 450 men who work for Satan. So if this is how it looks... So what? Are we going to get into some sort of like, is this going to be like a big New World Order conspiracy? Fuck me. Where everyone is, you know, the elite is secretly Satan worshipping and so they've woven it into the opening to the Commonwealth Games. But under the guise of it being about the Industrial Revolution, what does that achieve? Because people are going to watch it, they're going to be like, wow, that looks cool. Love the big bull, it looks amazing. It's really fantastic effects. What amazing choreography it's beautiful and then they're going to read about it and be like oh wow yeah slavery and industrial revolution those people aren't now worshiping satan if this really was an intentional like conspiracy it wouldn't there'd be no point to it what what would be the purpose just for shits and giggles just to be like haha they think it's about they think it's about technology it's actually about satan <laughs> satan's gonna get a kick out of this one what is it that the BBC is doing? The BBC is encouraging people. Hold on. Who? Hold on. I'm pretty sure. I don't know how. Let me let me just look and see if I can find out who was responsible. But I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been the fucking BBC. The BBC is just the just the studio. Oh, Duran Duran were there. I love Duran Duran. I should watch this opening. After this video is done, I'm going to watch the uh, Commonwealth Games opening. Iqbal Khan, the artistic director, Maeve Clark, the writer, Joshua Holness, the music director, Misty Buckley, production designer. Okay, so yeah, that's the creative team. Well done. Not only is it wrong to say that the BBC is doing X, Y, and Z. I mean, I guess you can technically blame them because they're the the distributor, the the they're the the studio that showed the games. I don't know. That's that's bizarre. My statement, and then he's he's put like a disclaimer on the screen so that I guess the BBC don't sue him? I don't know. My statement is false if this isn't how it looks. Some claim the bull is to represent Birmingham's bull ring bull baiting history. Yeah, literally is. The bull itself is made up of machine parts from Birmingham factories. Why turn it into a worship ritual? It's not. That's your imagination. You've just put that onto this event for some reason. I say for some reason, is to make content. <laughs> it's to make content for your ministry's Facebook page, which is really disturbing as a Christian person. Like, it's either that or he genuinely believes what he's saying, in which case, he's crazy. To worship Satan on live TV. But hey now, there is actually another instance where bulls are described rather negatively. The Bible says, many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan, have encircled me. Now, you're not going to believe this. But okay, so according to BibleRef.com, uh, part of the comparison is to the bulls of Bashan. Bashan was an area east of the Sea of Galilee. It stretched from the Yamak River to Mount Hermon. Today, Bashan is known as the Golan Heights. The wild bulls of Bashan banded together to attack their victim. They surrounded their prey and then ferociously pounced on the victim. So again, it's just a reference to the animal. It's just, it's just another reference to how this animal behaves. I don't know what he wants. He's just like, he's just picking parts of the Bible that mention bulls and being like, that doesn't sound very positive, does it? And it's like, no, it was an analogy. I don't understand how you can take that and be like, see, therefore, Satan. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. Now, you're not gonna believe this, but literally last week, me and my friend got charged at by a cow. We're on no! <laughs> I fucking, I was, I'm so sorry, this is so mean. I was gonna pause it and go, you have a friend? I don't fucking believe it. But then, <laughs> me and my friend got charged at by a cow. <gasps> fucking hell. What's your point? 
was that cow possessed by the devil? Are all cows, like, devil minions? What's your... Cows can be kind of aggressive and territorial. Like, if you get stuck in a field of cows... I've, I've been in this situation with my mum. We've had to really hug the edge of a field and dash away quickly because cows can be a little bit scary. I've never had that experience and been like, fuck me. The signs are everywhere. The end is nigh. <laughs> Oh, that was way better than I could have ever predicted where that was going. On a sort of popular walk that's known as a family-friendly route, and we notice a large pack of cows, about 15 of them, and they were- A group of cows is called a herd, my friend, or a drove. It is not a pack of cows! <laughs> feeding their calves. But what was particularly disturbing is that there was one large bull. Now this wasn't an old decrepit bull where you think, oh it's fine, I can outrun this thing. No, this bull was stacked, it could do- You shouldn't, just as a disclaimer, you shouldn't be thinking that about any bull. <laughs> you shouldn't be looking at a bull and going, that looks old, I could outrun that. I don't understand, this fucking idiot is gonna be like, we saw a herd of, sorry, a pack of cows feeding their young with a bull there and they were for some reason territorial it's probably a sign of the end times there's probably the devil involved jesus do some real damage so as we're trying to creep past suddenly one of the cows turns round and thrusts its head into my friend paul's chest and starts charging at him now my friend paul he's not the big why was your why were you and your friend Paul so fucking close to the cows that it could touch you in the chest? Of course it went for you. Paul's an idiot. Is that Paul? Are we being treated to a picture of Paul? Biggest guy on earth, but he said, No, that's you know stop what? I just went into that's crocodile dundee mode and I put my hand on the bull's head and I just pushed it back. And I saw it. Literally what was happening was Paul was getting pushed back by this cow. And while all of this is going on, my wife Emma is screaming out, crying. Of course his wife's called Emma. Of course she's called Emma. That's just my fucking luck. <laughs> My baby! Samuel, my baby! So what we did is eventually we managed to pull back from the cows. They followed us up a little bit and we climbed up this hill over a wall to get to safety. Now, the moment we got to safety, do you know what verse came to my mind? It was this verse in Psalm 22. That bulls, great bulls of Bashan, have encircled me. And it made me think how terrible this must have been for Jesus Christ. Because that's who Psalm 22 is talking about. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's talking about... <laughs> it's talking about the persecution of Jesus Christ. You blundering into a field full of cows with your mate and your wife. And a baby? It sounded like he had a baby there? What a fucking idiot. It was just like the persecution of Jesus Christ. I'm... It's not with real bulls, but with people encircling him, laughing at him, throwing out all kinds of accusations, mocking him, saying, if you are the son of God, him, him, if he is the son of God, bring yourself down from the cross and then we'll believe. People spit... Imagine... <laughs> Imagine having this experience where you're just out for a walk you fuck up, you annoy some cows, you have to run away, it's quite scary. And your first thought is, oh my god, imagine what it must have been like for Jesus on the cross. This guy has fucking issues. He is divorced from reality. On him, people ripping his clothes off him, people striking him, people crucifying him. Jesus. You know what I bet the real thought process actually was? I bet he was like, fucking hell, this will make a brilliant story for my ministry. Oh, and I can relate it to Jesus because of that thing in Psalms. That will be his actual thought process. Oh, a million people will watch that. That'll make a great video for my ministry. That's, that's a real <laughs> human being's response. Not, oh my God, poor Jesus, if I got scared by a cow, then imagine Jesus on the cross, oh. Must have been terrified on that cross, and yet he went to those great lengths. Our brave saviour went to those lengths to save you and me. On the cross. He our brave sa Whatever, our brave saviour. He's... is or is part of an immortal god. 
It's no fucking skin off his nose. He came back and then he went to heaven. Dickhead. If a normal mortal did that for humanity, it would actually mean something. He wrestled Beelzebub. He wrestled Satan and he crushed him and proved all of his enemies, all of his foes wrong when he rose from the dead on the third day. He paid the ransom that you and I could never pay. He paid the debt for our sins. And a bit like my friend Paul, how he just went brave and he protected me and Emma and our child. It's a bit like that. Jesus Christ puts his hand on the bull, on Satan, and holds him back and protects us. What? This is so embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. This is the sort of thing that your cringy church pastor would think is a brilliant story for a sermon. But this man's put it on the internet and two million people have watched it. What's this got to do with the Commonwealth Games? And the, the bull? Fuck me. <laughs> I'm actually annoyed. This is so stupid that I'm actually annoyed his children by shedding his blood and whilst we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ we're safe can I ask you when he got did you notice when he got really into the story he dropped the stupid voice a little bit when he gets back to his rehearsed scripted part he goes back to his calm minister's video voice what a charlatan Your question are you covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I thought we were all covered by the Lord's blood. I thought that was the fucking point. I thought the reason that he sacrificed himself, I thought he did sacrifice himself for us, for our sins. Why have I still got to bend over backwards doing bullshit for him now? It wasn't much of a sacrifice then, was it? Because apparently it didn't make any difference. Have you come to the one who paid the price for your sins and asked for forgiveness. Because whether you believe that this is Baal worship at the Commonwealth Games, there's one thing you cannot deny and it's this. Things are getting darker and you need- No, and I really resent you for presenting it like that because you know what, so much, so much of the time, it does feel like the world is getting darker. We are so, <sighs> I've not got the brain to think of the words that I actually one at the moment but there, there is so much news all around us with social media and just now we get the news drilled in from every angle 24 7 and the most frightening upsetting bad news gets the most clicks so that's what's the most shared the networks want to share the news that drives the most views to them and so it feels continually like everything's getting darker and harder and yet if you look at where we are now compared to where we used to be, the world is continually getting kinder. It's getting more compassionate. We're recognizing the deep problems that we have caused, whether that's to each other or to the environment or whatever. And we are trying to mend those things and build bridges just because fewer people are going to church does not mean that the world is getting darker. Do you know what it does mean? It does mean that fewer people are superstitious. Fewer people are like you, seeing a fucking mechanical bull and going, this is all about the devil. This is the devil's work. The world is getting dark. The end is coming. The time is nigh. You better get right with Jesus. People don't think like that anymore. Most people, because people are more rational than they've ever been before. People can see through you making up this horse shit and throwing in a story about how you blundered into a field of cows. People can see through you more than ever before. The world is more intelligent and proactive than it's ever been before. The world is getting, in general, the world is getting better. I believe that. And I think it will continue to get better. I think that good continues to win. And more people than ever are dedicated to fighting against the bad. This basically boils down to fewer people believe what I believe, because what I believe is fucking crazy. Therefore... I'm right, and everyone else is wrong, and so it's a dark time. If only everybody thought the same stupid shit I think, then the world would be fine. The light of the world, the only light that this world needs, the only hope we have is Jesus. No, fuck you. Fuck you. I've never seen Jesus. I've never seen Jesus. I'm really interested in biblical history, and I do not find sufficient evidence to suggest that Jesus was even a real person. At best, 
there was somebody in the middle of some of the myths and rumours about Jesus in the Bible. He is not the only light. He is not the only hope. There is light and hope in other faiths. People in other religions have beautiful hope and kindness and thoughtfulness. People with no religion have beautiful hope and kindness. That was the fucking point. That spark of hope and, and kindness after a history of doing terrible things, that was the point of the Commonwealth Games ceremony. No wonder you didn't fucking get it. Because you genuinely think that the only good people are the people that share what you think. I know that it's just a common... He's probably saying it without even thinking about it because Jesus is the light, Jesus is the only hope. This is a common sort of Christian thought process, a Christian saying. I resent it very deeply because... Because I'm an atheist and because I have hope. I think the world is fucking beautiful and I think most people are inherently good. And I don't think that changes based on whether or not you believe in Jesus. I don't think that if it turns out most likely that Jesus doesn't exist, right? That there's no, you don't have to believe in Jesus in order to be saved and for the world to be fixed or whatever. I think there is still hope and light in the world. And let's not forget, most of your favourite stories about Jesus were just pinched from other religions. Jesus wasn't some new invention. That light and hope existed before Jesus did. Otherwise, the entirety of human history before Jesus was born, there was apparently no hope and no light. Oh, it's just stupid and irritating. Jesus Christ, because he will defeat this darkness one day. And the Bible says that we are called to come out of Babylon, get out of Babylon, get out of this idol worship, get out of all of this sin, all of this rottenness that will drag you down to hell and turn to Christ. Like what? He hasn't even described what the sin is. He hasn't said what the problem is other than worshipping Baal. And people aren't fucking worshipping Baal, so this is entirely redundant. It's a whole, a whole fucking nothing that will get, if, if, if anything comes of this, what will come of this is three weird Christians that watch this kind of conspiracy content will write to the BBC and be like, I'm very angry about the opening to the Commonwealth Games. What does that achieve in making the world a better place, you fucking idiot? Christ, our safety, our salvation. The more he talks about Jesus, the more he goes into his shitty soft voice. Jesus Christ, our salvation, our light, our hope. And our hope beyond the grave. Please consider what I've said today. And please turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance and faith. By the way, have you heard... You know... I mean, this guy must know as well. That the only people that are watching this video and are going to listen to him are people who already believe and follow Jesus and are a little bit crazy or into conspiracies because of what this video is. You're not seriously believing that you're going to reach a non-Christian with this video about the Commonwealth Games and the time you were lost in a field and go, oh my god, I better get right with Jesus. Otherwise the darkness will continue to encroach the world. You know, it's, it's all shit. That's basically the message that these people try to spread, and this guy is spreading, is that everything is shit. Everything is shit and getting worse. The world sucks, and the only hope is Jesus. That's fucking gross. <laughs> That's really disgusting. Let's figure out what he's advertising now. Heard of Kendrick Lamar? Have you seen how he's been mocking the Lord Jesus Christ? If you've not, you need to watch this video right now. And He's advertising one of his videos. What's Kendrick Lamar been doing? Is it because he had a song called God? That was like, that was like 2018 though. That was ages ago. I guess Kendrick Lamar's maybe got a new song where he talks about God again. It's all good content. It's all good content for off the curb ministries. The fucking click farm, subscribe to too many stock footage services bullshit online ministry. Do you know what? I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if, I don't know whether the presenter is the guy that runs this ministry, if whoever runs this ministry isn't actually a Christian, doesn't genuinely believe in God. They just have a good eye on what uh, generates clickable content. I wouldn't be surprised. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. No. <laughs> 
that was a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> it did make us laugh, though. Or at least it made me laugh. I hope it made you laugh, too. I, I can't think of a better way than like a slug to describe how I am right now. I'm very sorry. <laughs> and I wanted to get back to making stuff because I miss it and I'm behind on content. So this is what you get. This is what you get. You get off the curb ministries. I don't even know what to... I'm just so upset that this has so many fucking views. And this has 2 million views on Facebook, and clearly this is from a YouTube channel. So God knows how many views they have over there. I think a lot of what he said is stupid and redundant and, um, and not very sensible. It's the work of a somebody playing up conspiracies to get clicks online, rather than somebody who actually cares about their faith. I hope you enjoyed that nonsense, that whatever that was. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Hopefully I will be back soon, less snotty and disgusting, and uh, we can check out some more stuff together. Before we go, I would like to give a big shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens over on Patreon. Have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon.